Welcome back YouTube. So today we want to talk about a simple concept of how to set money aside as a self-employed individual, help you understand the various taxes that are related to you as a self-employed individual versus your W-2 employee days so that you can better understand for and plan for your tax liabilities related to your self-employment tax. All right, so we'll start our example as an employee and establish the baseline for our conversation. Uh, we're in a situation where we're looking at a $45,000 gross paycheck for the employee. Ignore the other withholdings from those paychecks for this conversation related to retirement or health insurance or anything like that. We're just going to assume this is a straight taxable wage of $45,000. When that employee's check comes out, the employer takes and withholds Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax from those wages. So the employee gets a net paycheck of $36,157.50, having held out of their paycheck $8,842.50 in taxes, representing Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax for the employee. At that same time, that employer is paying the $45,000 of wages. They are also, in addition to that, contributing their half of the Social Security tax, the Medicare tax, and state unemployment and federal unemployment taxes. In this scenario, that total employer tax burden is $3,741.50. So the employer is going to be withholding the $8,000 in tax from the employee's check and then adding on top of that the $3,700 in tax for the employer's portion and remitting the various taxes of $12,584 to the various taxing agencies. So that's what happens as an employee. So what I want you to take away from this is the net take-home pay for the employee is $36,157.50. If you happen to be self-employed, or pretend for this conversation no expenses related to your self-employment income, and you charge the same amount as a self-employed individual as you made as an employee, you're going to find yourself with less cash in the bank. And I want to show you why. As a self-employed individual, you will be responsible for paying both sides of the Social Security and Medicare taxes as a self-employed individual. So that's 12.4% tax for Social Security and 2.9% tax for Medicare that you're paying. Whereas an employee, half of it was your burden and half of it was the employer's portion. In addition, you've got the federal income tax on top of it. But the cash drain for our self-employeds that they feel is having to pay both sides of that employer tax. If, as a self-employed individual, you want to make the same net pay that you did as a W-2 employee, the reality is instead of a $45,000 gross paycheck, you need a $49,735 gross paycheck. Why is that, you ask? It's because 12.4% has to go out towards Social Security and 2.9% goes out toward Medicare. So in order to get the same net 36,157, you have to gross 49,735 because the cash has to come out of your pocket to pay both sides of that tax burden. So to kind of recap, as a W-2 employee, the total taxes are 12,584, born partially by the employer. As a self-employed individual, to be in the same ballpark, net cash-wise, you'll end up with 13,577 in taxes. So what happens to you as an employee is those monies are withheld from your paycheck. So what you get net in the bank on a monthly basis is $3,013. As a self-employed individual, the net that rolls into your bank account is whatever you collected from your customers. In this scenario, you're collecting $49,735, so on a monthly basis, the cash that you get in the bank is $4,144.60. So the reality here is as a self-employed individual, you have to be disciplined to set that cash aside to pay the tax burden. Simplest thing we do is advising our clients is to take the gross money that you receive from your customers and take 30% of that, set it off to the side in a savings account. That'll be your tax savings account, and it should be sufficient to cover the tax burden as well as possible debt reduction or retirement options for you. So you get $1,000 from your customers, you put 
$300 in a savings account and $700 can be spent on the expenses of the business or distributions to you, the owner, to pay for your personal expenses, grocery bills, etc. I hope that's been helpful for you and gives you kind of a rundown of why it's more expensive to be self-employed. There are some other benefits, but we didn't go into those right now because I wanted to give you a baseline understanding as a self-employed individual what that tax burden really means to you. Thanks so much for watching.